Hey everyone, I'm Ian Norman from Lonely Spec, and today I want to talk about my plan for shooting the upcoming partial solar eclipse that should be visible here in Chicago. Um, so on June 10th, there's going to be a solar eclipse that should be visible in kind of like the northeastern part of the United States and like into Canada. Um, and I really want to shoot, uh, I really want to try and shoot it in Chicago here. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you my PhotoPills plan. All right, so uh, in PhotoPills here, I've got the June 10th solar eclipse. You can see here the red pin, which is where I'm gonna be standing, um, and then the black pin, which is my subject. And the subject that I'm trying to shoot is the Chicago Harbor Lighthouse, um, which is kind of like on the breakwater, um, just off of the, the shore of Lake Michigan. So there's a specific point where I can stand where I should hopefully be able to get the rising sun uh, partially eclipsed by the moon and it rising directly behind the lighthouse. That's at least the idea. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at this plan closer. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the planner here just to show you kind of the steps that I went through um, and what I should be able to expect for this specific uh, solar eclipse. So um, looking over here at the different tools, um, I've got a few things enabled. Um, one of them is uh, enabling the black pin, which is this one right here. And uh, turning this on and off basically allows you to, um, you know, figure out like what will line up with what. And I specifically want to be able to line up the position of the sun, which is defined by this thin yellow line with the position of the lighthouse. So you can see that I've got it nearly lined up here with uh, the lighthouse. And then of course the red pin is where I plan to be able to stand. So you can see there's this like specific spot right on the edge of this, uh, this bike path that runs along the lake shore. So let me tell you just a little bit about how I made this plan and how I use the eclipse function in PhotoPills. So, if we scroll down on the right side here, you can see that there are uh, a couple different Eclipse tools. Um, the first one is here, which if I tap it, we have a list of basically all of the eclipses that are going to happen for, I don't know, just the next like 30 years, basically. So let's go to 2021 and we can see here, June 10th, there's an annular eclipse. And uh, based on our red pin position, it's going to be a partial eclipse. So that's the one that we're going to select. Now, after selecting that, it loads the data for the eclipse and sets it to right about the beginning of visibility for your red pin position. So wherever you set your location in the PhotoPills planner, it will automatically adjust to that time point. So if we scroll through the timeline on the bottom, we can see the position of the sun, how it moves at sunrise, basically, and throughout the day. And if you look over here on the right, I don't know if you see that underneath the eclipse tool that we just used, it shows the position of the moon relative to the sun during the eclipse. Um, so that little icon is actually indicating what the eclipse should look like at any given time of the day. And you can see that if I get to a very specific time, there's a bar that swipes across that icon, and that bar is indicating the position of the horizon relative to the sun. So the sun just starts to become visible at 5.14 a.m., and then if I go a little bit farther, the sun will be fully above the horizon right at about 5.18 a.m. And we can see that at 5.18, it's still gonna be just partially eclipsed. So we should get that kind of cool crescent shape uh, during the eclipse, assuming that there's no clouds, um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get that. So that's kind of what I'm going for in terms of, of the look of the photograph. I want to get the sun like right above the horizon over Lake Michigan and right behind that lighthouse. So right at 518, we can see if I zoom in, the sun is just starting to line up with the, just the edge of the, the tower of the lighthouse and it should move basically across that from about 5 to 18 a.m. and then 
right until like 5 19 a.m it'll it'll get a little bit farther above the horizon and be on the other side of the the, the lighthouse tower all right i had to take a quick break but i'm back now so the next thing that i want to talk about is camera gear specifically lenses and how lenses will affect the subject size specifically how big the eclipse will be in your photograph. So I'm gonna be shooting on the A7 Mark III, uh, which is what I'm using to record this right now. And uh, this is the lens that I'll be using to photograph the solar eclipse. So this is a uh, Sony 100 to 400 millimeter, 4.5 to 5.6. And I'll probably be shooting at 400 millimeters, which is the longest that this lens goes. Um, and there's actually a trick that you can use for figuring out how large the sun will be in your frame. And the way that we do that is we take the dimensions of our sensor size. So in the case of my camera, I'm using full frame, which is 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters. And if you take the shorter end of your camera's uh, sensor size, so in my case, the 24 millimeters, the height of the sensor, and you multiply that times 100, that gives me 2,400 millimeters. And 2,400 millimeters is the length of lens that I would need to have the sun fill the entire frame, basically from the top of the frame to the bottom of the frame. So if we were to have that number, 2400 millimeters, and get 1200 millimeters, at 1200 millimeters, that would also reduce the width of the sun in our image by about half. So 1200 millimeters would give us about half of the frame. And if we were to have that again to 600 millimeters, we would end up with a sun that takes up about one quarter of the height of the frame. And since I'm using a 400 millimeter lens, 400 millimeters is one sixth of 2400. So the sun would actually take up about one sixth of the height of the frame. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about is the actual subject size. So in this case, the lighthouse. So if we go back into photo pills and we take a look at the black pin tool, on the bottom, you can see that little description that says sun height, and then in parentheses, it says size 23 meters. So in that case, that means that given our position of where we're standing with the red pin, that the sun will appear to be roughly 23 meters tall relative to the black pin. So if we look up the Chicago Harbor Lighthouse height, we can actually see that its focal height, which is the distance between the water and the height of the, the light on the top of the lighthouse, is actually 25 meters. So it's about the same size that we're expecting the sun to appear given our shooting position. So there's actually another way to visualize this in Photopills, and that's by using the field of view overlay in the planner. So if we click this little button in the bottom right corner of the map on the planner app, it gives us access to a couple different camera tools, and the one that we're interested in is the FOV, or Field of View tool. So by enabling the Field of View tool, you can see that Photopills automatically visualizes what our field of view will be with any given camera and lens. And you can see that I have the A7 Mark III selected here, and uh, I'll have my lens set to 400 millimeters. So that's all set and good to go. So if we zoom in on the lighthouse here, you can see that the yellow lines have changed a little bit. We've actually got a wider yellow line that's now representative of the actual size of the sun, like the width that the sun will appear in our frame given our shooting position. So that's how I used Photopills to come up with sort of my concept idea for this particular shoot. And uh, that's my plan for shooting the eclipse in Chicago. Hopefully we'll have relatively clear weather in the morning. Uh, the forecast is still several days out, so I have no idea what to expect, but I plan on filming that morning and making sure I get as much information about what it's like to shoot the eclipse. I'll do my best to put that video together uh, in the days after the eclipse. So definitely keep an eye out for that as my next upload. All right, guys, that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and please subscribe and check out all of our gear reviews and tutorials on LonelySpec.com. Uh, thanks so much for watching and clear skies.